Bootstrap in part two. Calculate P value stat quest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to Stat Quest. Today we're going to talk about bootstrapping part two. Calculating P values. Note. This stat quest assumes that you are already familiar with the main ideas behind bootstrapping. If not, check out the quest. This stat quest also assumes that you are familiar with hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis, and p-values. If not, check out the quests. In bootstrapping part one, we had a new drug to treat an illness, and we gave that drug to eight different people that had the illness, and we calculated the mean value. 0.5, but because of random things, like maybe these people were healthier to begin with, we were unsure if the drug actually worked, and that maybe we got 0.5 instead of 0 because of random stuff we cannot control. Ultimately, we used bootstrapping to solve this problem. First, we showed the four steps of how bootstrapping works. 1. Make a bootstrapped dataset. 2. Calculate a statistic. In this example, we calculated the mean, but we could have just as easily calculated the median or the standard deviation, etc. 3. Keep track of that calculation. And 4. Repeat the first three steps until we have a nice distribution of bootstrapped statistics. We then used the distribution of means to create a 95% confidence interval for the original mean value. And because the 95% confidence interval covers zero, we could not reject the idea that the drug is not doing anything. Bam. Confidence intervals are great for hypothesis testing, but so are p-values. So now let's talk about how to use bootstrapping to calculate p-values. First, the null hypothesis is that the drug has no effect on the illness. And that means, in a perfect world where we can control everything, if the null hypothesis was true, then we would expect the mean value of the data to be zero. However, when we calculate the mean, we get 0.5. So let's shift all of the measurements to the left 0.5 units so that the mean of the shifted data is zero. In other words, this shifted data set with mean equal to zero represents a true null hypothesis. Now let's use bootstrapping to see how the mean value varies when the null hypothesis is true. First, let's make a new number line. And, from the eight measurements that were centered on zero, create a bootstrapped dataset. Remember, we sample with replacement, so it's okay to get duplicates. Bip, boop. Now we calculate the mean value of the bootstrapped dataset and add it to our histogram. Then we just repeat the process a few thousand times until we have a nice distribution of mean values. Now, because we created the bootstrap datasets from a collection of measurements with mean equal to zero, the histogram gives us a sense of what would happen if the null hypothesis was true and the drug had no effect. When the null hypothesis is true, 36% of the means are between negative 0.5 and 0.5. And that tells us that the probability of observing a mean value between negative 0.5 and 0.5 is 0.36. Likewise, because 16% of the bootstrap means were less than or equal to negative 0.5, the probability of observing a mean less than or equal to negative 0.5 is 0.16. Lastly, because 48% of the bootstrap means were greater than or equal to 0.5, the probability of observing a mean greater than or equal to 0.5 is 0.48. Now let's go back to the original data. And remember that the original mean was 0.5. Now, because this distribution represents possible values for the mean if the drug, on average, made zero difference in how people felt, we can use it to calculate the p-value for observing a mean value of 0.5 or something more extreme, where more extreme means further from the null hypothesis than the observed mean, which, in this case, means further than 0.5 units from zero. 
So the p-value for the observed mean, 0.5, is the probability of observing a bootstrapped mean greater than or equal to 0.5, which is 0.47, plus the probability of observing a bootstrap mean less than or equal to negative 0.5, which is 0.16. Adding the two probabilities together gives us 0.63. And because 0.63 is greater than 0.05, we fail to reject the hypothesis that the drug makes no difference. Double BAM! Note, the method we use to calculate this p-value, start with raw data, calculate the mean, and then shift the data so that the mean equals zero, and then use bootstrapping to create a histogram of means around zero, and then use that histogram to test the hypothesis that the drug made zero difference, will work for just about any statistic we can think of. For example, we could have just as easily calculated the median of the original data, and shifted the data so that the median equals zero, and then use bootstrapping to generate this histogram of median values around zero, and use the histogram to calculate the p-value for the observed median, given the hypothesis that the drug has zero effect. In this case, the observed median is 1.8. So the p-value for the observed median, 1.8, given this histogram that represents the hypothesis that the drug has zero effect, is the probability of observing a bootstrap median greater than or equal to 1.8, which is 0.01 plus the probability of observing a bootstrap median less than or equal to negative 1.8, which is 0.19. And when we do the math, we get 0.2. So again, we would fail to reject the hypothesis that the drug has zero effect, but this time we use medians instead of means. And the point of this example is that we can use bootstrapping to test whatever we want. Thus, if the data looks like it has outliers, we can use medians, which are more resilient to outliers than means. Triple BAM! Now it's time for some shameless self-promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, check out the StatQuest study guides at statquest.org. There's something for everyone. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting StatQuest. If you like this StackQuest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StackQuest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs or a t-shirt or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!